I'm Dump Truck DS, and this is Mapping for Quake. And in this episode, I'm covering Wally. Now, Wally's an older program. It's about 20 some odd years old. And it was designed for Quake 1, Quake 2, Half-Life, Serious Sam, that kind of thing. So you can make custom textures for those games. And it has some very distinctive features that you won't find anywhere else. And that's one of the reasons I'm covering Wally. -E. There's a lot of people that swear by Wally, -E, so I'd be remiss if I didn't cover this program. Now, there are better ways to make textures for Quake, that is for sure. I'm not arguing against those other methods. And in fact, another video will cover that. Now, this video is just an overview of some of the features, not all. There's no way I could take the time to explore the program. I'm not a graphic designer. You're going to see that very soon. Uh, I'm certainly not the best guy to teach making custom textures, but at least I can show you the tool, some of the real specific things that make it special and make it useful for Quake modding. Now, Wally -E is a bit clunky and a little bit buggy. Um, I've never had it crash in Windows 10 or Windows 7. I think some of the perception of the bugginess is the quirkiness of the interface. There's some things that seem unfinished or, you know, uh, maybe not well thought out, but everything seems to work and you can get some serious texture work done in the program. Now, there is a very good tutorial that I'll link down below for Wally -E that was written years ago, and it covers Quake 2, but it's, it's basically the same process. So I highly recommend you take a look and download that tutorial and take a look at that as well, because that's going to give you even more information. So when you launch Wally, -E, it's going to default to the Quake 2 palette or a combination of the Quake 1 and 2 palette. I'm not exactly sure what it's loading here, but this is not the Quake palette, I can tell by looking at it. So I'm, I am I already made a, a wad here called Tutorial Wad. As soon as I double click on one of these, the palette will load. First of all, in this lower left hand corner, there's a couple of these icons here, and this is basically toggling a tiled view. So you can see that you can check the seams and everything, and we'll get to that in a little bit. This is for Half-Life, and these are for animated textures, which I showed you in a previous tutorial. So as I said, I want to kind of focus on the things that are very specific to Wally -E that you won't find in other image editing programs, or at least they'll be very different. So before we do anything, I want to be clear about something that's super important. If you're new to Wally, -E, you're going to want to have these toggle settings enabled. I don't know why it doesn't default to this because these are so important. So you're always going to want to have these up, or at least most of the time when you're making stuff with Wally. -E. And we'll get to all the specifics, but they are context sensitive. So it depends on what your tool is selected as to what it displays and what you can control. So it's a little it's a little wonky, but you'll get it. It's not too hard. So we have a spray paint. First of all, my brush is way too big. So I'm going to make it four pixels. That's under settings here. You have a zoom level here. Use your mouse wheel for that. You can have a different shape of a brush. So you can have round, you can have square, you can have diamond. This percentage thing here is, is you can see here, least, a little bit, medium, more, or most. And that's just the amount, depending on the tool, of course, that you're applying the, uh, the given effect. So this in this case, it's kind of adding noise. And if I did most, it would be really aggressive. So, so what I want to do with this slip light texture is I want to, I've got some Fulbrights down here, and I want to make a Fulbright version of this in blue. So what I want to do is take the, the brightest light and I'm going to sample that by left clicking on the color. So if I spray paint this, you can see it's introducing noise and it's kind of dithering this and it's not really the greatest for this situation. So I'm going to click on replace. So I'm going to sample this color. I'm going to control and right click. And then you'll notice down here on the right, it is, you know, sampled on the right hand, uh, the bottom selection. And then I've got this already sampled there, so I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to make this a little bigger and I'm going to paint and it's only doing that color. So that's the beauty of replace. You can pick with your color picker a specific color and it's going to just stick to that. But what if I did recolor? Well, if I click on that, it's going to take this and it's going to grab things from the palette and it's also going to kind of replace all the similar colors. But here's the problem. I don't want this green tint here. So I'm going to undo that and I'm just going to do this by hand. So I'm going to go back to replace. I'm going to sample this by control right clicking. Now I've got a new sample color. Now I'm going to go to this next entry here and um, make my pixels a little bigger. And there we go. I'm replacing that. Now eventually I'm going to run out of blue Fulbrights, but I'm just going to do this for right now. And I'm going to sample this. Now I'm going to have to go to some other colors, but what I'll do is I'll just kind of head up here and sample this color. 
and then I'll just maybe sample this guy. So that was just using the replace and it's a you can see it's a little labor intensive, but it, at least it's really accurate that way. So let's look at spray recolor on a larger texture that's 64 by 64 and I've zoomed in quite a bit so you can see what's going on. So I've chosen this green color in here and it's just going to try to map the luminance values and I have this set to a little bit. I don't want to completely recolor every single pixel. So it's actually pretty good. I think this actually looks pretty decent and you do want that variation. So let me undo. There's almost like a gray color right here, just here and there. I think it's probably a good idea to have those little variances. So let's make a new base texture. And what a base texture is, is something I wanna use over and over again, and then add different elements to. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but let's just do this very quickly here. So when you say create new, it's, it's gonna come up and you could do a new wad, or in this case, I just want a new texture. So it's gonna be a MIP. It's gonna come over here. I want 64 by 64. Now I'm gonna do spray recolor, or spray paint actually, I'm sorry. And um, I'm going to right click on this guy. So he's my bottom coat. So the nice thing about Wally is you have this tiled view and you can kind of get rid of some of these seams, some of these hard edges and kind of smooth these out. So I'm going to do this and it's still not the greatest because you can obviously see it's a tiled texture, right? Oops. But what I want to do is I'm going to go to image and uh, diffuse. And so there are these filters that you can use. Some are better than others. Some are higher quality, yada, yada. But I think this one is actually pretty good. So you have light, medium and heavy. Let's start with light diffusion and you can preview it. So you can see that I didn't do too much. Let's go to medium. Eh heavy. Seems like it really pixelates it. And let's go to have very heavy. Now that's that's way too much. So let's go back down to medium and that blends it together. Now I still have some, you know, kind of dark areas and it, it's pretty apparent that this is a, a blend. So I'll go back to spray paint and I'll just kind of spray it another color in here over the top. Anyway, I'm going to diffuse it one more time just to see what it would look like. Yeah, let's do that. Now I want to show you these Wally only features that are kind of fun. So I can take this t uh, scratch tool and I'm going to set this to heavy or most. I'm just going to do a big old scratch right across the middle there. So you can see if you zoom back in out, you know, that is actually pretty good. I'll just add a few more. So you can see how that works. Now we're getting into some of these th other things. So let me zoom in and I'm going to put some bullet holes in here. So this is kind of odd. So we're going to go down to, there's an icon for bullet holes because I guess they're so ubiquitous in these online shooters. But what you have to do, the interface is a little wonky. See this mouse icon here? You're going to have to tell it, hey, I want to use you. So you can kind of audition these and look at these and scroll through them. So I'm going to use large holes here. And then you want to left click to assign it to your button. And then you can kind of drag it around and paint it on. And it doesn't look that great. So I'm going to put a couple bullet holes in here. You have some chips. Oops, I got it. See, that's the problem. You have to assign it. So I'm clicking here. Now I've got it. And it this is a kind of really good way to kind of randomize what's going on in the texture. We'll save him, we'll close and we'll go back to the base texture. So now I've got one that has little pock marks in it. So now I have another clean copy of this tileable kind of texture. And let's go to drop this drop down and we have patterns that we can use. So I've selected pattern paint down here. So I've got this pattern selected and I, and I want to just paint it across the top. It's not going to look that great, but we're just going to do it anyway. I can constrain this by holding down shift and then just dragging like so. But what if I wanted to go down? Well, then what you do is you, you, hold down shift and you hit space bar and then that toggles it. I want to show you the selection tool next. So we're going to highlight that. I'm going to drag this out. Unfortunately, this isn't as good as Photoshop. It's just very limited to rectilinear kind of selections. So I've got this selected. I'm going to go to image, add noise, and I'm just going to choose very light because I just want to kind of put a patina over this. And um, so it doesn't kind of ruin the integrity of this. 
So yeah, I've added this band. It's yeah, it's all right. It's not that great. Um, but I want to show you the lighten and darken tool now. So I'm make a little square with two pixels and I'm just going to drag this across it that there's a highlight. Actually, I want a little bit more of that. Of course, I, I'm blowing out the noise, but let me go ahead and paint in just by hand a couple pieces of my own noise. Now I'm going to take the darken tool and I'm going to do the oh, hello, darken tool. Where are you? So now I've got kind of a, a little edge there. I'm going to need some more noise there. What I could do is I could do a little bit of a spray color and just choose a uh, lighter color and then that'll add a little bit of noise. As you can see now, I've got that kind of sharp edge there. I have a new base texture selected here and I've chosen rivets. And the important thing to remember is this drop down should match what you have selected over here. It's one of the quirks of the program. But I want to be clear that some of them just don't work very well. But one thing to kind of take note of, see, I've changed the color here. And if you use these rivets, it's going to take this color scheme here. So I've selected a pop rivet. Let's pick this one and just see. This is a good time to show you the grid. So you can align these and using the grid and it's uh, pretty handy. And you can color, you, you can combine these as well. But you have a setting a gap setting so you can select like I want 32 pixels, right? Or 64. So that looks a little better, right? That's a little more uniform, etc. So those are the things that you can use to combine and get these different, you know, one of a kind textures based on your base layer. So as you can see, these textures are not the most stellar uh, textures ever created, but here they are in game and, you know, you can get good results if you know what you're doing, which I clearly don't. That's it for Wally. -E. In the next video, I'm going to cover some of the other tools out there that you can use. Obviously, Photoshop and GIMP, everybody knows about those, but there are some other really specific and free programs or very cheap programs that you can use to make quick textures. And I'll just kind of touch on those and give you some ideas of what you may want to explore because not everybody loves Wally -E and not everybody's on Windows. So you need other options. As always, thanks for hanging in there and we'll see you in the next video.